Hello everyone. This is the Wonder Swan color that I just got from Japan. Uh, this is a council that was only sold in Japan. Um, came out December 9th, 2000, but was discontinued in 2003. So this never hit the North American market. I, I don't think it ever hit any other market. So let's go ahead and crack it open. So this is the Final Fantasy Edition Council. This one came with the game with a specially themed uh, handheld. Let's see how much of it is actually in English. The game itself is not, of course. So the box isn't in perfect shape, but it's pretty good considering this is over 10 years old. It's not too bad. So you can see they're definitely laying Final Fantasy on right here. So this was actually a partial creation of uh, Gunpei Yokoi. He is the creator of the original Game Boy, Game Boy Pocket, he ended up leaving Nintendo after the Virtual Boy uh, was an abysmal failure. Um, Virtual Boy was out, if I remember correctly, he was out about eight months before they pulled the plug. So he left and went to um, his own company where they worked with Bandai and co-developed the first Wonder Swan, uh, which uh, came out in 1999. That was not color. This one is. Let's go ahead and take a look here. So this is cool. Came with all the packaging, so that's nice. So this is the council itself. Let's see if I can get it out of here without mangling the package. It's not that big. It's about the size of maybe an Android smartphone. Screen's obviously smaller. Looks to be a 2.7, maybe 3 inch screen somewhere in there. I, I didn't look up the figure ahead of time, but it's, uh, it's definitely not a small screen. Comfort wise, doesn't feel too bad. No shoulder buttons. Let's just have the the two face button action buttons here, power, start, sound button, so that might be a mute of some sort, um, lock button. See, all the buttons are in English, which is interesting. So we have the battery release. I don't want to break that, I'll work with that later. Lock button. So this is just a, a lock, I'm assuming so you don't accidentally turn it on. Um, made in Japan, if you can see that. An extension, probably some sort of link cable. Contrast. Contrast is odd for a color system. Usually you only see that in the monochrome systems. So that's probably a carryover from the older non-color. So overall this is a pretty neat console. Oh, that's interesting. So if you look closely, these screws, there's some sort of special star bit and it doesn't look like a Torx screw. You're probably familiar with torque screws from uh, automobiles. A lot of them use it. Uh, Nintendo uses a three-wing screw. This uh, looks unique. It, it might be a Torx. It just looks like the pattern is the tiniest bit different, but it could. A Torx may work in it. Let's see if I get this battery open. I don't want to break that. You see some of the Final Fantasy theme on here. So this is a pretty neat console. So this is the white version, but it's it's more of a it, color doesn't always transfer because you got the camera, you've got your monitor. The camera's calibrated differently. It's doing light adjustments. Your monitor is 
probably factory calibrated. Not many people change it to uh, to be correct. Um, but this is kind of like a, a milky off white. So this this white here is pure white. So is the paper is pretty white as well. So just to give you some idea, it's kind of kind of a yellow tint. Now I'm not sure if that is just due to age or uh, if it came that way, but I'm assuming it came that way because usually if it's due to age, somebody left it on a shelf for 10 years and it faded on top, but this entire thing is evenly co colored the entire way through, even in the little nooks and crannies. So I'm going to guess that the factory color came that way. So this is pretty neat. For sale and use in Japan only and commercial rental prohibited. Hmm. They wrote it in English. So this is cool. This is Final Fantasy for the Wonder Swan with some neat artwork on the back. Let's crack it open and see what the games look like. See, I'm always so careful with rare stuff like this. You don't want to damage the packaging because part of the reason of buying something obscure and strange like this is to uh, collect it. I mean, obviously I'm not going to play through the entire Final Fantasy game if I don't know Japanese. Final Fantasy is always very story-based, so I'm going to be playing a whole bunch of turn-based without knowing what's going on. So this is kind of a big insert. I'm wondering if maybe there was a you know, case, storage case for this. I'm, I'm not sure, to be honest. But, this is what the cartridges look like. Pins are exposed. You can see the circuit board. So this was popular for a while, this clear plastic where you can see the circuit board. If you go back and look at Game Boys in the mid to late 90s, a lot of them were available in this, this clear plastic. Even the N64, um, the controllers were available in clear plastic and um, I believe there was a smoke black clear plastic console as well. And then they did other promotions at various points where they had different clear and 64. So the, the 90s were big on the clear plastic, seeing the circuit board. I mean, today that would be unheard of. Could you imagine seeing an iPhone with clear plastic to see the inside? I think that'd be kind of neat, but most people would probably think it's tacky. So they get cleaning instructions, which is interesting. I don't speak Japanese, or read Japanese in this case, so I can't tell you what it says. Um, that's neat. Most companies usually don't want you working on, uh, on their stuff. Alright, so I figured out how to get the battery bay open. It's not that difficult. You just push this tab down slide this towards you. Like I said, not that difficult, right? There we go. Okay, maybe I should take that back. Oh, so this lock locks the battery bay, not the console. That's the trick. Battery bay lock. It takes one AA battery, which is interesting. Most uh, Nintendo consoles always took two, or Nintendo handhelds, rather. cartridge slides right in and fits flush. The entire cartridge is visible and the pins sit inside. Let's go ahead and turn it on. So obviously not backlit. Let's see about that contrast button. Also contrast is a pretty wild change. So we want to get the sweet spot, probably right there. So the sound is just, let's see, two, four levels, one of those levels being off. So you can't actually adjust full volume control. Oh, I think this is telling me lock is on, or not, not locked. Nope. I'm not sure. So for a size comparison, here's the Game Boy Advance, which was 
kind of the chief competitor at the time, and this was the dominating system. The Game Boy Advance is chunkier. It's larger, just by a bit. About the same thickness. Um, I mean, because of the battery pack, they're the same thickness on this side, and it's thinner over here, but for all intents and purposes, all intents and purposes, it is roughly the same thickness. Obviously, you have two directional pads on the Wonder Swan, one on the Nintendo, but you do have shoulder buttons on the Game Boy Advance, which was big at the time because a lot of Super Nintendo ports were coming to it. So this is on maximum volume, just to give you an idea. They seem about the same. The Nintendo Game Boy Advance might be the tiniest bit louder. And then of course Nintendo came out with the popular Game Boy Advance SP which when fully extended is definitely larger, but thickness is about the same when it's closed. So the clamshell design, backlit screen, not gonna go into that right now, but this was definitely a, a popular revision. Well, that's the Wonderswan color and I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment and if you have any questions, I can take a look and I'll see if I can answer it for you. Thank you for watching.